Hello, welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, the only review show hosted by a French professor immediately off of an elliptical. I believe this is our 20th episode, and uh, I was thinking these are the still humble beginnings of this YouTube channel. Will it ever not be humble? Will it ever not be in the beginning? Time will tell. So, uh, you know, as always, uh, the whole show is all about trying to figure out what am I going to listen to, you know? And as I said in the last show, most of the new records that are out are compilations. So I did see one um, by rapper Lil Yachty, and I started listening to it thinking I was going to review it. But I just, it's all this like new slimy, drippy, syrupy hip-hop. <clears throat> I don't even know if you could call it hip-hop. So I, I might get to that in the last episode for this week. Because um, as you know, the weekend's on Thursday, because new records come out on Friday. And if it's not clear, I don't review anything more than a week old. That's part of the rule. Um, so I just said, no, I can't do it. I, I can't do a whole thing about dripping and sliming and sipping. So I went completely different. Instead of some presumably Southern rapper, I went with a Norwegian synth pop artist named Faro. Faro. Farao. F-A-R-A-O. Uh, I don't know if that's the same way the ancient grain is spelled. I don't think it is. Um, the record is called Pure O. Um, oh, is it like a joke on French? Like O is how you pronounce water? I don't think so. Um, apparently, based on what I read, she is from uh, uh, Norway. Uh, she lives in Berlin. And this whole record is inspired by Russian disco. So I don't know much about Norway. I've been to Berlin. I liked it. And I know nothing about Russian disco. So I came in pretty blind to this one. It starts off in... Uh, I think I'm going to go through track by track, and I think in the future I'm going to keep doing it that way. As opposed to coming up with some kind of grand statement about how things are, I'm just going to take you through my listening as I'm sweating and, and working away uh, on the elliptical there. Uh, the first track, called Marry Me, the words that came to my head while listening to it were Sleepy Abba. Now, I don't know if that's just Scandinavian prejudice on my part, that, oh, she's from Norway, Sweden, Abba, I don't know. But I think it actually works pretty well. Um, I would say that's close to the most exemplary track, but we'll get to the most exemplary track uh, a little bit later. Pretty much immediately there, with that song and the second song, Get Along, I started to sense what was going to be my issue with the record. Her voice is mostly, almost entirely, totally breathy the entire record. I mean, I don't mean like, hey, but just the way that she sings, it blends with the rest of the music. So she's interesting because she's a multi-instrumentalist. According to the credits, uh, she plays zither. Someone else plays zither too. I don't know. Uh, guitar and piano, harp, which gets her extra points. Um, so that's interesting. You know, you can tell there's a lot of organic instruments, but then there's just tons of synthesizer, and most of it is that kind of disco-y, synthesizer-sequenced sounds as the main part of the song. And then she sort of sings along over it. And it gets kind of a sameness to it. What I found myself by the third track was I was really hoping for a standout track, you know, like the one that's like totally different than the rest, and it's just excellent and amazing. Um, something to break out of the sense of shuffling sequencer and synths and breathy singing. Will it happen? Will I ever get my breakout song? Well, stay tuned. First, we have a sponsor. Oatmeal. Sometimes I eat oatmeal. Okay, uh, that's not a real sponsor, in case you couldn't tell. So I'm sitting there and, and I'm getting more frustrated. I'm actually not sitting, I'm, I'm running in place like a hamster on a wheel. I'm getting more and more frustrated and I'm starting to think, you know, well, maybe there's more to it. Like there's a song called Cluster of Delights about halfway through and it's interesting because it has this really samey uh, synthesizer and sequencer and singing and I never really quite know the words that she's singing. You know, they don't really pop out. I don't think it's the accent. I think it's she's just kind of Na, 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 na. That, that sort of, I don't know, kind of sameness. But then there's a breakdown, sort of in the middle, kind of like a, a 
instrumental breakdown where things get more interesting and I start realizing and I realize this for the rest of the album that actually it's a lot better produced than my initial take was so it may have this kind of samey monotonous feel to me the first time I listen but there's a lot going on it's really well produced and basically every song has at least two or three interesting parts to it interesting interplay between uh, between drums and drum machine between synthesizer and guitar or synthesizer and harp as is the case with cluster of delights and I realized that this is how I felt listening to Phoenix for the first time just like this guy's not singing anything and all the music's just kind of in this flat middle register and of course the more you listen to Phoenix the more you like it so my review here is going to be not like I I believe that this will be a more rewarding record the more I listen to it um, the next track, Gabriel, uh, is one of, the, one of the more standout tracks that has this nice mixture of analog and digital, uh, or acoustic and digital. And, and while I was there, I, had, I realized that, like, Sky, you only say, like, four things about any record. And one of the main things you say about rock and roll is the mixture between acoustic and digital. And instead of feeling embarrassed about that, I'm actually just going to embrace it. And from now on, I'm going to be really noticing when I talk about that. You know, I talked about that uh, in the beginning with, you know, with Paul McCartney's new album, and then with 21 Pilots, and then with Django Django. And basically, every rock and roll artist now seems as though they must incorporate digital into their music. Often it's in the form of a drum machine, even though they have a drummer, or a sequencer, even though they're playing chords on a guitar. And this could be, I believe, like, the way to determine how well produced an album is now. Because it's not a question of, is there going to be electronic elements, but how well are they integrated? So stay tuned, all three of you who might watch this, because uh, I'm gonna be paying attention to that. Maybe at the end of the year, I'll, I'll have a Acousta Digi award for the best uh, artist who does that. Then finally, we have the standout track. Now, it's not quite what I was looking for. You know, it's not exactly that great big, yes, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. But the song, The Ghost Ship, has nice vocals, kind of digital vocals that get woven in. It's got distinctive lyrics, you know, things you can definitely hear with the breathy vocals. Um, the, the lyrics seem to be pretty interesting. She seems to be singing about some kind of relationship. Um, and it's, it's, I would say that's the best example of what this is because in some ways it's kind of boring, but in other ways it stands out. Um, towards the end, almost every track seems to be in this better register of the last couple. The first half is not quite as good as the second half. Uh, the song Triumph Over Me, I would say is the most, I would say overtly sexual, but nothing in the record is overtly sexual. Like I think she's singing about sex a lot of the time, but it, doesn't well first of all you can't really hear what she's saying but it's more the atmosphere that's that's being uh, drawn in and particularly in that track uh the, the rhythms are i don't know i think i call them languid they're kind of languid mm, like i don't know asymmetrical rhythms kind of stutter step there's kind of a, a sexual vibe to them which um makes that another probably the second best track on the album and then by the last track, much like I did with Django Django, I gave up trying to listen for a standout track. I was just at peace with this fairly consistent atmosphere. So if I had to sum this up in three words, oh geez, I'm supposed to have thought about this. By oatmeal? No. Um, hmm. I don't think I have one. I'll just come up with it and put it on the title. Maybe I'll put it in later. Brilliant without standout? No, it's not really brilliant. Listenable? That's better than listenable. I wouldn't really call it sexy. Mm. Lacking identity, but it does have an identity. Well, good job, Pharaoh. You have stumped me, and that's fine. Uh, the Chiron that I read, the most interesting thing I read while uh, looking at the, at the TVs uh, was something that just said, dating the usual suspects. And that just imagined, you know, dating Benicio Del Toro and Kevin Spacey. Um, ooh, 
that's probably not a good plan. Okay, uh, I don't think I'm gonna do the, the trivia thing anymore, because um, I can't think of, oh yeah, I can actually. A pawpaw, okay. Hidden depth, hard to find. There it is. 